In the city of Taipei, exchange student Lucy is arguing with her boyfriend Richard, who she's been seeing for only a week. Richard wants her to finish a job for her, which consists of entering a fancy hotel and handing a suitcase to Mr. Zhang. Lucy doesn't understand why Richard can't do it if it's so easy, but Richard refuses to explain or tell her what's in the suitcase. He admits he'll be paid well for this and offers to share the money with her, but Lucy gets suspicious something so silly could pay so much and tries to leave. Desperate, Richard handcuffs Lucy to the suitcase and tells her Mr. Zhang is the only one with the key, so she must do the delivery. Nervous and scared, Lucy enters the hotel and asks for Mr. Zhang while Richard watches from outside. The receptionist calls the room and begins to look worried as he tells Lucy to wait right there. Suddenly, a bunch of Korean henchmen show up in the lobby while Richard gets shot on the street. Lucy is terrified but she can't do anything because the henchmen pay off the receptionist then drag Lucy into the elevator, ignoring her begging and her tears. When they make it to the room, Lucy sees the men hiding Richard's body and it makes her throw up. Afterward, Mr. Jang finally shows up, and after washing the blood off his hands, he calls a hotel employee so he can translate for him. Lucy explains that she doesn't know anything, and after lots of her crying, Jang writes down the suitcase's lock combination and leaves to hide behind the door. All his henchmen protect him with shields and Lucy is scared of opening the suitcase, but she's threatened until she accepts. Fortunately when she finally gets it open, nothing explodes, there only are four bags of a strange blue powder. Jang is pleased to see the bags and makes his men bring an addicted hobo to use as a tester. The man takes the powder and starts shaking before freezing for a few seconds, only to then start laughing like a maniac. The weird sounds he makes cause the henchmen to chuckle too, which makes Jang shoot the hobo on the spot. Afterward Jang offers Lucy a job, and when she turns it down, a henchman knocks her out. Meanwhile in Paris, Professor Norman is giving a lecture about the use humans give to the brain. Most animal species only use 3 to 5% of their cerebral capacity, while humans use 10. This has allowed us to evolve and do science. The only animal that uses more is the dolphin, who with 20% has developed abilities like an echolocation system. It seems humans are more concentrated on gaining time through immortality or reproduction to pass down the knowledge to the next generation. Norman thinks that if humans would learn to use more of their brains, they could access lots of external information and develop control of others, perhaps even control of matter. Back to Lucy, she wakes up inside a hotel room and discovers a surgical scar on her stomach plus medical tools on the night table. The henchmen make her dress up and take her to see Jang again, who now has a British assistant with him that does all the talking. The man explains the blue powder she saw earlier is called CPH4, and that they put a bag inside her belly for her to smuggle it into another country. At that moment, three more mules arrive, and everyone is given fake passports with plane tickets that include a return trip in 24 hours. The assistant tells them one of their people will be waiting for them at their airports to take the powder, and if the mules try to throw it away or go to the police, the henchmen will hurt their loved ones. While he speaks, Jang shares a drink with Lucy as if saying good luck. Then the mules are taken away with bags over their heads. Lucy can tell she's put inside a car because of the lights, and when they remove the bag moments later, she finds herself inside a concrete room. Two thugs are watching over her and one of them gets a bit handsy, so Lucy pushes his naughty hand away. The guy gets offended by this and punches her before he starts kicking her in the stomach. As his partner takes him away, Lucy cries in pain because the kick broke the CPH4 bag, and now the powder is entering her system. Lucy's body starts going through convulsions and the powder changes the wiring of her brain, causing her to develop new abilities as her body mysteriously slides up the wall and across the ceiling. Going near the lights makes the bulb spark, and she even manages to float in the middle of the room while the chains keep her from drifting away. Lucy falls unconscious for a few seconds, and when she wakes up, she feels like a whole new person. Uncharacteristically calm, she sits back on the chair and analyzes her situation. One of the thugs comes to check on her, and Lucy opens her legs to distract him. The man believes her invitation and when he comes closer, Lucy beats him up in seconds, then she uses his belt to drag the table where the man left his gun and the keys, which she uses to escape. Afterward Lucy finds the rest of the thugs having lunch in another room, so she immediately shoots them all before sitting to have a bite too. It isn't until she's done eating that she notices a bloodstain on her shoulder, meaning one of the guys managed to shoot her before dying. Lucy inserts her fingers in the wound and removes the bullet without feeling any pain. Then she puts as many weapons as possible in a bag, steals a jacket, and leaves the building to find a taxi. She shoots a driver to show she means business and makes the other guy take her to the hospital. On her way there, Lucy is shocked by how clearly she can hear random conversations on the street. When they make it to the hospital, Lucy sneaks inside with a gun in hand. She bursts into a surgery room and looks at the patient's x-rays, realizing she can perfectly understand them, then she pushes the patient off the operation table. As she explains he couldn't be saved because the tumor was on his spine, Lucy threatens the doctors into operating on her to remove the powder bag, turning down anesthetic because she doesn't need it. The doctor begins the procedure and Lucy isn't bothered by the knife, in fact she takes the surgeon's phone to call her mother while she's being operated on as if it was just a casual chore. Fortunately the thugs didn't reach her mom yet, and Lucy tells her she can feel everything, 
from people's vibrations to the rotation of the earth. She also remembers clear memories from when she was a baby, including tasting her mother's milk for the first time. Before hanging up, she tells her parents that she loves them and she's thankful for everything they did for her. At that moment, the surgeon removes the bag and they discover there are about 500 grams of powder left. Lucy tells the doctor this is CPH4, and while the surgeon adds new stitches, he explains CPH4 is what pregnant women make during the sixth week of pregnancy in tiny quantities to help the fetus form the bones. For a baby, it's almost like an atomic bomb, so it's a miracle Lucy is alive after consuming half a bag. Lucy wonders if she'll be alive for long before leaving. Outside, Lucy notices she can see a tree's inner lines of life. Moments later, Lucy arrives back at the hotel and kills every single henchman in her way. Jang doesn't hear anything because he has headphones on, so Lucy takes the chance to stab both his hands into the armrests of his couch. Then she gives a speech on how she has access to all her brain and that makes her understand how primitive humans really are. She asks Jang about the other mules, and when he refuses to answer, she touches his forehead to revisit the memory of the assistant handing out the passports. Now she can see the mules were sent to Berlin, Paris, and Rome. Leaving Jang with his hands stuck to the couch, Lucy returns to her apartment and her roommate receives her with a hug, which allows her to feel her life system as well. Lucy grabs a computer and begins doing research at an insane speed while ignoring her roommate's babbling because Lucy can already predict what she's going to say. The online research tells Lucy about Norman's knowledge of the subject of the brain, so she decides to call him. She tells him she's already read every single word he's written, and to prove how far her own brain has gone, she suddenly appears on all the screens around him, from the TV to the cell phone. Lucy tells Norman about the CPH4 and confirms his theories are real, she's unlocked powers thanks to using her whole brain and her mind is still developing. She thinks she may die in 24 hours and that she doesn't feel human anymore because she doesn't feel things like pain or desire. Lucy doesn't know what to do with all the knowledge she's accumulating in her brain, and Norman advises her to pass it on, thus they agree to meet in 12 hours. Before leaving, Lucy prints a prescription in Chinese for her roommate because she's detected she has liver failure. Moments later, Lucy's face appears all over the news because she was caught by the hospital's security cameras. Since now she can control every single cell of her body at will, Lucy changes her hair to go unnoticed. Then she calls a police station in France and tells Captain Del Rio all about the mules that are about to arrive in Europe so the powders can be retrieved before they're sold off. Afterward Lucy goes to the airport, and when a dog gets suspicious of her, she keeps it back with just a look. Meanwhile Del Rio follows Lucy's information and arrests the mule arriving in France. A few cops also arrest the guy arriving in Berlin, and in Italy the mule tries to escape, but he's caught anyway. When all three arrests are done, Del Rio communicates with his foreign counterparts to organize a transfer. Back to Lucy, she's spending her trip working on two computers at the same time at a crazy speed. When the stewardess tries to remind her she should turn off her computers, Lucy makes her nose bleed to send her away and asks for a glass of champagne. A different steward brings her the drink and as soon as Lucy takes a sip, she discovers her teeth are coming off and her cells are destabilizing because alcohol is technically poison. Her body starts to disintegrate to achieve a safer form that could assure survival, so a panicking Lucy runs into the bathroom and consumes the rest of her powder bag. Her cells start coming back together, only for her body to suddenly explode in a bright light. Moments later, the plane lands and the police take over Lucy's case. A doctor tells Del Rio that the sedative he gave Lucy should keep her unconscious for a whole day, but actually it takes only a few hours for Lucy to wake up in the police station. She immediately dresses up and leaves the room, only to find herself surrounded by armed cops. With just a movement of her hand, Lucy knocks them all out except for Del Rio, although she does make all the bullets drop from his gun. Del Rio confirms he has all mules with the bags of powder, and Lucy announces she'll take them. Nearby, Jang's henchmen discover all the mules are being taken to the hospital to remove the bags. Del Rio takes Lucy in his car, and as they cross Paris, Lucy continues to discover how her brain keeps on developing. Now she can see all the phone lines in the air and even manages to touch them until she finds the conversation between Jang's henchmen. Using the car's radio, she gets all the details even though they're in Korean, yet she doesn't explain anything to Del Rio. Jang's henchmen enter the hospital and kill the doctors before they start working on extracting the bags from the mules. When one of the guys tries to leave, he just gets shot on the spot. Back to Lucy, she uses her powers to push Del Rio into the passenger's seat and takes over the car. Although she's never driven before, she does it expertly now, going at an insane speed as she moves some cars with her mind but also causes a bunch of crashes. The police soon begin chasing them, but Lucy just uses her powers to make them crash as well. Moments later, Lucy and Del Rio arrive at the hospital just in time to see a cop looking for the mules and getting shot for it. The leader of the henchmen tries to leave with the powder bags, but Lucy creates an invisible wall that blocks his way. Then she uses her powers to disarm all the men and send them floating against the ceiling before taking the suitcase from the leader and leaving him frozen on the spot. The suitcase only has two bags in it, so Lucy finds the third mule and tears the bag from his stomach before leaving. 
Del Rio doesn't understand why she needs a normal human like him around and Lucy answers by kissing him before explaining he helps her remember what being human is like. As more cops arrive at the hospital, Lucy and Del Rio escape in his car, unaware that Jang is parked nearby and orders his men to follow them. Lucy calls Norman and guesses he's at the university before he even mentions it, thus she shows up there with Del Rio to meet Norman's colleagues. The scientists are skeptical of Lucy's powers, so in order to prove it, she touches one of them and reveals all the details of his life by just reading his mind. Outside, Jang meets with his team leader, who tells him he doesn't have many men left and that Lucy is a witch. Jang decides he'll have to kill Lucy himself. Inside the university, Lucy can detect that the criminals are coming and asks Del Rio to secure the area. Then she tells the scientists about everything she's learned as she modifies her body in a pen at will, explaining people invented the concept of uniqueness because we codified our existence to bring it down to human size to make it comprehensible. Mathematical laws are fake, the only true unit of measure and proof of existence is time. At that moment, Jang's henchmen enter the university and begin shooting people. Del Rio informs Lucy he won't be able to hold the room for long, so Lucy asks the scientist to make a fluid with the powder and inject it directly into her veins. As Del Rio gathers a few cops to start a gunfight with the henchmen, Lucy absorbs all the bags of CPH4 and suddenly begins expelling a beam of light from her mouth. Then, Lucy's body begins transforming into a black substance that absorbs every machine in the room in an attempt to become the next generation supercomputer. The scientists watch the room become a white empty space as the henchman's leader fires a rocket launcher to defeat the police at the same time Lucy's brain finally reaches true 100% usage. Now Lucy's mind can travel through space and time, allowing her to see every single moment in humanity's history, including the Big Bang, the dinosaurs, and the first evolved primate, which scientists have also named Lucy. As the entire universe presents its existence to Lucy, Jang begins to slowly approach her from behind. Lucy's body finishes its transformation and she suddenly disappears from her chair, leaving Jang shooting at the air. Jang tries to shoot the doctors to demand answers, but Del Rio shows up and shoots him first. The scientists turn around to discover the supercomputer vibrating as it hands Norman a USB stick that has a vision of space on its plastic. Then the supercomputer disintegrates and disappears, leaving Del Rio wondering where Lucy is. At that moment, he gets a message on his phone saying I am everywhere. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.